This is Scott Ritchie, and this is Mathematical Models of Pressure Control Ventilation. And today we're, I'm going to be talking about pressure control and my inspiratory time fraction affecting mean airway pressure. So it's kind of a review on mean airway pressure and also um, one of the biggest factors of generating mean airway pressure is my eye time setting. So if we look at my simulator, this is Rob Chatburn's um, mid-frequency ventilation simulator, and it's based on mathematical models of pressure control ventilation. I'm going to look at my graphs over here, and specifically this graph here, you see this red dashed line. That's my mean airway pressure. And let's look at my patient variables. I made a patient with a very low compliance, approximately 20, and low resistance, 5. And right now I have a duty cycle of 25%, so this is a 1 to 3 IE ratio. Now, one way we can increase mean airway pressure, of course, is by increasing my inspiratory pressure. So I currently have it on 20, and we're going to watch this red line in the right-hand corner. And I can increase that, and as you can see, the red line goes up. That increases my mean airway pressure. So if we were maxed out on our... FiO2 setting, we can increase um, mean airway pressure by that. I'm going to turn that back down. Or we can also increase it by increasing our PEEP too, and that dramatically went up as more effective than increasing my inspiratory pressure. However, let's say we're maxed out on my inspiratory pressure right here, and we kind of have high PEEPs. What also we can do is we can affect the area under the curve. So that's the part of the equation of mean airway pressure is uh, mean airway pressure is the area under the curve for one cycle divided by the total cycle time. So if I change my duty cycle to, let's change it to 33%. So that's a 1 to 2. Notice my mean airway pressure went up. I did nothing with my inspiratory pressure or my PEEP. However, I got a rise in mean airway pressure. And I'm going to increase it again to 50%. This is a one-to-one -one ratio. As you can see, it's going up again. And this is why modes like airway pressure release ventilation, bivent, bilevel are so effective with um, oxygenation is it dramatically increases my mean airway pressure by this duty cycle. So I'm going to increase it again. I'm going to change it to 80%, and this is a four-to-one inverse ratio. And you notice my mean airway pressure has gone up quite significantly. However, it hasn't affected, I haven't increased my inspiratory pressure or my PEEP. So let's see it in the ventilator model. Okay, here's my ventilator simulator. And I have an IE ratio of 1 to 3, or a duty cycle of approximately 25%. And that's going to generate, I'm opening tab 2 on the upper left-hand corner, a mean airway pressure in yellow of 11 centimeters of water. And I've set pressure control 20, a PEEP of 5. I'm going to keep this constant. I'm changing the IE ratio now to a 1 to 2, change my duty cycle or inspiratory time. And we'll wait a couple breaths, and we'll look at the mean airway pressure. And it increased to 13 centimeters of water. So I'm not doing anything with my PEEP or my pressure control level. I'm going to change my duty cycle again, or my inspiratory time. That will change my IE ratio. I'm changing it to a 50% duty cycle, or 1 to 1 ratio. And let's see what it does to my mean airway pressure. It's increasing a little more, to 16. And I'm going to maximize it. In pressure control, the max duty cycle I can use is 80%. And I'm going to change that to 80% or 4 to 1 ratio. And let's see what kind of mean airway pressure we can generate. And this is just showing an example of how my duty cycle affects my mean airway pressure. So here we go. Mean airway pressure of 22. 